now let's get behind the headlines because my guest was a former bar owner when he started his own company back in 2011. There's an EPOS system which means electronic point of sale. Well, joining me to discuss this is Jason Evans from EPOS Now. And we'll start with a, a series of introductions just so you guys can get to meet our panelists. Jason, Jason, Jason you, 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 you. What, what makes you think that you're different um, to the other kind of CEOs that you see? Um, I don't know if I am. I don't know if I am at all, really. Um, people always ask me that question, is there anything different about me? I don't think there is. I think, I think and that's what, the, that's what these videos will show. That's the best thing. I think we did mystify that process. I think that question is exactly why we do these videos, right? I think if I could say I had one thing, I'd say I had, um, I, I, I like taking a risk. And if I'd probably do something if it made sense. And I think if we can get people to think that something makes sense and actually do it, I think that we've won on these videos. So I think we want people to watch these and get the inspiration they need to start their own venture, regardless of how big or small it is. Regardless well, maybe, maybe, but hopefully they won't become homeless because they try something that is too risky. I just think people always ask us what we're doing, yeah? And people, always, young entrepreneurs are saying, you know, how do I do it? How do I get kind of where you are? I guess that's sort of an enviable position somehow, right? So I guess we want to show that and we want to hit as many people as possible to, like you've just said there, entice people that do have a potentially sustainable, decent idea to go off and do it. If you could round up your career in three words and kind of explain the journey of it, what do you think those three words would be? Yeah. Um, it's fucking hard. Yeah, probably. It's, it's fucking hard. That's basically, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. The only thing that keeps you going is, is the fact that you've, um, the fact that how far you've come and it's like, it's kind of like a mentalist thing where you just want to keep pushing. You just want to keep pushing because you just surprise yourself and you, you take on more and you battle more and you test yourself and you think you're at your limit of what you can take and you just keep pushing. It's brilliant, it's, it's, it's great. It feels like you're running a race yeah, and you're coming to the end of the marathon and you just think to yourself, you can't push anymore. And you see like the competitors coming up on you, you think actually, do you know what? I'm just gonna burn them fuckers off, right? <laughs> and you just keep running and it's just, it's brilliant. It's like a mental test, it's a physical test. It's, it's like a test of your wits, test of your intelligence. If you can really challenge yourself, starting a business is one of the best, best tests you'll ever have because it really tests you, especially if you're a sole trader, right? When I, start, I started EPOS now as a single individual, right? And we've now got 300 employees and offices in America and England, right? So when you, when you start off that journey and you begin, you, know, you do everything, you learn every skill and the amount of growth that you have to go through, like I'm not naturally a people manager, you see it shy, yeah? I'm not exactly the best people manager, let's be honest with you. I'd say I'm a better salesman than I'm a people manager, right? It's fair enough. And look how many times I leave you alone, yeah? Without any explanation of where I am, right? Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I don't care and I don't want to work with you, it just means that you know, we've got we've got a lot on and we've got a lot of hassle but but those skills have to be you have to teach yourself those skills right you have to teach yourself all sorts of skills and it's the learning and that engagement and that growth you you get personally that makes entrepreneurs like that you know entrepreneurship so good are you um are you scared uh yeah pretty fucking scared mate <laughs> all the time of course you're scared if you're not scared it's not healthy right because every business now is a techn technology business right if you're a restaurant you're not adopting technology hopefully our technology right but if you're not adopting technology right now and you're not thinking about you know how to how to use um you know marketing candidates plans or how to uh how to use technology to break down your service st states and make sure that you're using your technology to do margin control or make sure you're keeping your stock levels right or making sure you're engaging with your, pro your employees on digital rotors or if you're not looking for new ways for customers to engage you with menus and pay, if you're not looking at technology for your customers and your employees to feed back at you so you can make constant business improvements, right? You're not gonna survive. So this is the thing, right? All businesses now are using technology to displace, but I'm a technology business, right? Who thought, that taxes would completely be displaced by Uber, right? Who thought that? And then who thought potentially Uber could now get displaced by driverless cars, couldn't they? Obviously. Imagine a new application that you just share your car on an app and you don't charge for it, yeah, and it's driverless. Imagine that. Yeah, that's the next displacement potentially, couldn't it be? Yeah, who knows, right? Who thought that Kodak would get displaced by mobile phones? You know, who thought that Blockbuster Video would be displaced? Probably me, because I've still got like two of them. <laughs> yeah. Can't go back there, right? But yeah, this is what I'm saying, right? So you've got to be scared all the time because if you're not scared, you get complacent. Let's talk about the awards. How important are the awards? Do you see them as benchmarks to your career or do you see them as cherries on top of what you've already achieved? 
Yeah, it's good. It's good because we've, we've won a hell of a lot of awards. I think we've won over 50 awards at EPOS now in that business, right? It's nuts how many awards we've won. But, you know, to be fair, awards are a, a, awards is a business in itself, right? You know, hopefully I won't alienate the award ceremonies, but they are a business in themselves. You know, they're run by companies that generate profit or looking to generate customers. So essentially there is a trade-off, whereas, you know, they apply for the awards, but they kind of want your business or want you to spend money to buy tables or seats, right? Now, it's, 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 a great, it's a great way to raise recognition. You should always, always be aware of the awards, especially your industry. You know, it's not, it's not just for show, before we say that as well, right? Because you are up against some serious businesses and it does build massive credibility. But any business in any vertical should be seriously aware of any awards that are up for grabs in their vertical and pit themselves against their competitors. It's a great way to meet competitors. It's a great way to meet other businesses. You know, it's a great amount of recognition. But the most important thing about the awards, right, is for the people in the business, the staff. Now, these guys, they're slogging their guts out every day, you know, for you, yeah? And half of them don't have ownership of the business, right? So they, they can never be as bought in as you are. But, you know, they still want to be absolutely, you know, recognize their work, part of the business, understand the direction it's going, and they want recognition for their work, don't they, financially and for awards. So when you win an award, it's a chance for you to keep your team and celebrate the good work you're doing together, isn't it? You mentioned education earlier. Right? Yeah. Uh, and that wasn't one of your mm -hmm. high points, if you like. Well. <laughs> it was a high point, but I just didn't do any work. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people say that you need that, yeah. that education, that higher degree level kind of Mm -hmm. to be able to succeed in business but mm -hmm. obviously that isn't the case for you. you've done this off the back of your own initiative really. yeah but i think i think this it depends what what you class as learning right so if you're really really smart at, at, at classroom learning that's great too right you can learn from the textbooks you can learn from the school and i think that's important if that's the way you learn that's fair enough right but you see with me i couldn't learn in that fashion because it's too boring right so i had to look at other ways so i this is going to sound really random but i played a lot of computer games a lot of theme park yeah, a lot of stuff like that. So I, I developed like problem solving quite early on. I'd always go outside and like play and find other things. You know, as soon as the internet came out, I got a computer. You know, I managed to, my granddad couldn't use a computer. So luckily he gave me his old computer. It was a touch, couldn't believe it, right? So we could try to go on the internet, trying to play around the computer stuff, you know, trying to figure all that stuff out. And it's just like how you learn. I mean, every, every moment you're awake, you're learning. When you start a business, you don't need, there's no pre-qualification you need to be self-employed, you're your own boss, right? So you don't need a degree. Now, why would you need a degree for? Now, you do need a degree if you're a doctor, if you're an accountant, obviously you need a degree if you're a solicitor. It's very, very important. You, know, you should never take that away from those guys. They've done a great job. And you know, anyone who gets a degree, hats off to them. They can go to university, they can commit something for two years, you know, two or three years, even longer if they're a doctor. You know, that's something that I probably would struggle with. So I think, I think those guys, you've got to respect them. And it does, having a degree that shows they've got a good, comp, good core set of competencies and they can study for a period, achieve a goal and, and see it through. I think that's a good skill in itself, absolutely. But I think for me, yeah, I can do that shit because it's too regimental, right? And I want to earn some cash money, baby, yeah. So I had to get out there and just smash it, right? And it wasn't for me, I just, it wasn't for me at all. I couldn't concentrate for two minutes, and I'm fucking stupid, yeah? I, I don't know what I'm fucking doing, yeah? They tell me stuff, and they go, maybe you're super intelligent because you're not paying attention. In fact, no, I'm not. I just can't figure it out. It's too fucking stupid, right? And I can't be bothered. So I'd li literally be outside just smoking fags and running away and not doing anything, down the arcade, playing laser tag, when I should be working. But what do you look for? What qualities in people that you look for when oh. you're hiring? Uh, I, I, like handsome Asian men is a mess. Yeah. Yeah, I had, yeah, I'm over them now. I got, got a lot of trouble with that. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, Shah's an actual tall, dark and handsome Asian man. You've got building a business is about collecting the right kind of attitudes and building the right people together. You know, and you need people you can rely on and lean on. Because I've, got pe I've had people that are brilliant, like technically brilliant, really smart. And at the end of the day, they can't, some people can't be in an entrepreneur-led run business. Because when the shit hits a fan, and I'm in fucking tears, yeah, in tears, running around the business, screaming the house down because I've just, I, I'm, I'm one step away from being completely bankrupt, right? And, and people can't understand. They look at you like you're an alien going, well, who gives a shit? You know, and then, and then at six o'clock, they leave two seconds later and they don't fundamentally understand you've got a problem. They need to understand the small business and entrepreneurial mentality. They've got to understand that because if they don't have sympathy for you and they don't understand that, it's just not a fit. Do you feel that, that the fact that you are young, you are, you are good looking, you are successful. Thanks, are mate. Successful. This is great. Do you feel Keep it those, coming. <laughs> do you yeah? feel that those things sometimes hinder you and perhaps you're not taken seriously? 
Okay, so A, I'm a five out of 10, right? So, so that's, let's just get that in the open. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think if you're different, it helps. I think if you're different, if you're like 10 years younger than expect, that helps. But I think in this day and age, right, the fourth technology revolution we are, people expect you to be young. I think you know, you've got your Mark Zuckerberg, you know, you've got those type of guys that are commonplace and they look at that now as success. People, people, pe it, you'll find more doors will open to you, yeah, because people are attracted by that and they think you'll be the next big thing and they want to come along for the ride and they want to they get, they want to get on that bus. So I think anything you do should be different, right? And, and there's guys like me, you know, I, I'm 34 years old. I don't think that's young by any stretch of the imagination. But what we really want to do is get people who are younger in business. If I'm 34 and I'm considered a young entrepreneur, we've got a bloody problem around here, right? Apparently middle-aged here, yeah? The average life expectancy for a male is like 74, and I'm pretty much middle-aged. So if I'm a young entrepreneur, we need to get more young people into, into doing these types of businesses. What is the point? Hmm? I, why do you want to keep on going? Because it's fun, yeah? It's because of the test. It's the test. It's the test and it's fun. At the end of the day, what are you going to be doing? Yeah? What are you going to be doing if you're not going to be doing it? Yeah? You've got to be doing it, right? The thing is, you've only got a real short term on the earth, right? You've only got snapshots. So you might as well think to yourself, right, I've got to optimise my time. And you think, you think I'm, going to, I'm going to build the house that I live in. Like, I'm building a house at the moment, yeah? I'm going to build the life that I want to live, yeah, with the stuff that I want to do, right? And I'm building this business because I can, right? Because if, you, if you're lucky like me, a lot of it is luck, and you start a business, like you, I was only a pub owner, remember that, yeah? And I came up with an idea for a cloud-based POS system. I went to China and built um, a tooling process. It, it was the first to bring mobile processors and POS, mobile processors and port of sale computers. And then we came up with the idea of putting the cloud on POS. This is like seven years ago, it was revolutionary. Now we were lucky to have a FinTech, SaaS, recurring revenue business, yeah? right, in cloud technology, yeah, with recurring revenue and highly scalable in any other region, right, purely based on luck. Because we didn't even know what that term means, we didn't know those acronyms. It took me three years to figure out what they were, right, we didn't know, know anything about that, right? And, we, and when you have an opportunity like that, you owe it to yourself and everyone around you to fucking take it as far as you've got to do. So it doesn't matter, hell or high water, mate, I'm taking this as far as it'll fucking go. There's no relax. I'm just going to absolutely never give up and be relentless. If I never give up and be relentless, and I always prepare to go further than anyone else, how can I fucking lose? Yeah, because no one would be prepared to work as hard. No one would be prepared to go the extra mile. I'll do absolutely anything. I'll take a fucking knife for this business, yeah? We will take it as far as it's got to go because we owe it to ourselves, right? And then, we'll do it fucking again. In the first um, couple of weeks when I was with you, mm -hmm. I was just kind of observing you and how you operate. Mm -hmm. To oh, me, it felt yeah. like yeah. it was <coughs> you're on a roller coaster. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I could pinpoint at least three or four times during the day where I think, you know what, I want to get off this ride now. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's a fair comment? Would you say that's a fair correlation where it's just a ride where you think, okay, this is a bit much now, let's just stop for a second. But obviously, you can't stop. <laughs> would you say that's a fair comment? Do you get feelings like that? Uh, yeah. I'd say 50% of the time, I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm one step away from having a meltdown. Yeah, obviously. At the end of the day, right, you've got to understand the pressure. The problem is it's massive highs and lows. You know, you've got, you've got to go through a lot of... When I first started this business, right, we were reselling someone's software and they pulled the software and I had like low hundred, hundreds of customers without any software and I had to remortgage my house. I had a Ferrari at the time, I had to sell that. I had to sell everything I had. I had sold everything and I, was, I had nothing. And then I had to start trying to build this cloud software. It was really stressful. So I'd never built software before, I never tried anything like that before. And uh, I remember I just went home and I was rocking the bath and had this massive panic attack. I started having these panic attacks, right? So I went to the doctors and he said, um, oh, you've got depression and anxiety, you stop what you're doing, he gave me these beta blockers. But they slowed you down, I couldn't think at work, right? So I just got rid of him. But there's been a couple of times like that on the journey where, yeah, you, you probably will have like a nervous breakdown. You probably will. You probably will get anxiety and depression. You probably will at some point because you've got everything riding on it. It does not never go well the first time. When you work 15, 16 hours a day for one sole purpose and no matter how much you work, you can't stop the tire taking you away, yeah? And no matter how much you battle it, how much you want it, it doesn't. Yeah, it makes you emotionally crumble, it does. You know, you will emotionally crumble, everyone will. That is a given. But you could say that about anything. You know, if you put your life and soul in a relationship, it goes bad. You know, you put your life and soul on anything, it goes bad. You know, be prepared to be sad because that's what the world's like. You know, but at the end of the day, just because you emotionally feel bad, yeah, 
doesn't mean you can fucking quit, does it? Right? That's the bottom line. You know, just if, if I was, I'm a very emotional person, you've seen that. I'm chucking my papers around. Who fucking come up with the idea of a glass office? <laughs> it's rubbish, <laughs> right? Because you guys have seen me, I'm freaking out. Yeah, I freak out all day. Of course I do. But at the end of the day, I come back the next day and fight again. That's the difference. It doesn't matter how I feel. I'm able to put my feelings to one side and just get the job done. Cool, so guys, that's it. I want to introduce myself and Shah, the main man behind the camera there. So we're going to have a lot of fun together. We're going to have a lot of adventures. We're going to go and sign some deals up and do some business. Uh, some of you want to see what the lifestyle's like, your houses, cars, and you know, what it's like to be an entrepreneur on that side. And hopefully a lot of you will be more interested in the life of an entrepreneur, the challenges, the ups, the downs, how hard it is, the international travel, the deals, the people we meet, and really use this in an insightful way and how to use this as a launch pad of maybe hopefully start your own business. Right, so me and Shah would really appreciate if you, uh, if you comment, like, and share. You can comment right down here in this box. It would be really good. The more feedback you can give us and the more, more interaction you give us, the better we can steer these to give us the kind of content you want. Um, Shah's doing a great job, so any feedback you can give us would be much appreciated. Peace. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Super. Super. Super.